In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get Drastic and PPSSPP loaded up onto your Project Eris build so you can get some Nintendo DS and PSP games running. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. So a couple of days ago, we got the release for Project Eris. We've had a ton of people asking questions about different ports. So what I'm going to be doing is doing a few videos in succession, uh, telling you guys and showing you guys how to get ports up and running. Now, by far the most requested port that's been asked for is the PPSSPP PlayStation Portable Emulator. So I am gonna do a video on that, but I figured I would bundle that as well with Drastic, which is the Nintendo DS emulator. So we're gonna do them both at the same time, and we're gonna just go ahead and get started. Now, before we do that, I ask if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It means a lot and it would help quite a bit. All right, let's get this thing rolling. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to navigate to a web page. It is right over here. This is the classicmodcloud.com. I will leave the link directly below in the description. It gives you access to all of the different mods. So as you can see, we have a lot to pick from. And as I said, I'm going to do a few different videos on some of the more difficult ones just to help you guys get up and running. But a lot of these are pretty easy and they're just more or less drag and drop. So we are going to focus on Drastic, which is right over here. And we are also going to load in our PPSSPP standalone emulator. First thing that we have to do is just select it and it's going to prompt us to download that file. Now, what we're going to do rather than download it to the desktop and transferring it over, we are going to save it directly onto our Project Eris USB drive. So make sure that is plugged into your computer. We're gonna go ahead and find our Sony drive, and here it is. What we need to do is go into the project underscore Eris folder, and then in here there is going to be something called mods. We're gonna double click on the mods folder, and we are going to save it in there. This isn't a long process, they're all relatively small files, and they will download relatively quickly. As I said, mine is already done. Next, we're going to do the same thing with our Drastic Emulator. So I just need to find that to right over here. We're gonna click on it. It's again going to ask us where we wanna save it. Now, because we've already navigated to the mods folder, it will automatically populate that way. So we just have to hit save. Same process, it'll take a couple seconds to download, but they are small files and we're pretty much good to go in that sense. We don't need this anymore, so we can go ahead and either close our web browser or minimize it up to you. And then what we wanna do before we do anything else is we wanna load some games onto our USB drive. What I actually recommend doing is grabbing our USB drive, which is right over here. There is a bunch of folders that you could put things into. Now, one of the new folders that we got with Project Eris is a ROMs folder. And the ROMs folder is actually gonna be good for multiple different things. Its intended use is for Emulation Station. If you want to run games through Emulation Station, they have to go in these folders. What I actually recommend doing is compiling all your ROMs and keeping them in these folders and just redirecting any of the other uh, applications that you're gonna use. For example, RetroArch, load your games from this folder. Or if you're gonna be playing the PPSSPP standalone emulator, load your games up into the proper folder here. And that way everything kind of stays nice and bundled together and very convenient and clean. And you don't have to have games in 10 different sections. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is locate our PSP folder, which is right over here. We're gonna open it up and I'm just gonna kick it over to the side. Then I'm gonna grab my ROMs folder, which is right over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab some PSP games. Now I'm gonna load them up. I'm just gonna quickly fast forward through this process. Okay, so now that that's complete, we're gonna do the same process for a Nintendo DS game. So we're just gonna back out of that uh, directory and we're just gonna go to the NDS folder. We're gonna double click on that and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and grab some games and dump them in. But I am just gonna go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, perfect, so we've got a handful of games loaded up into the correct folders. We're more or less ready to go and pop our USB drive back into our PlayStation Classic. Now, I do wanna mention that once we load it up, it's gonna take us to our standard Project Eris splash screen, and it's going to start installing those mods. Now, depending on the size of the mods, it may take a little while, but I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. 
All right, so as you guys can see, it says installing mod drastic and installing mod PSP. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip over this. And once it's finished with the installation, it will take you directly back to your boot menu. So as you can see now, we have access to the PPSS PP standalone emulator right on our boot menu. So if this is something that you wanna just use and you only wanna use your PlayStation Classic for loading up PSP games, you can always set your auto boot on so that way it boots directly into PPSS PP. So the first thing that I'm gonna do for both of the emulators, when we get them loaded up, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the settings that you're gonna to wanna to change just to get them running the way that you want to based off of the controller that you're using. First thing that we're gonna do is we're going to jump into the PPSS PP emulator. And right away, what we're going to notice is that it has automatically found the directory for the games and it's loaded up any of the games that we had put onto our USB drive, which is nice and convenient. That being said, if you did need to change that up, you could always go over to the directory section and just relocate where you've got your ROMs stored. First thing that we're gonna do is hop into our settings. What we're going to notice is that the mode is set to skip buffer effect and it says it's non-buffered and it is faster and this absolutely is true. You're gonna want this set for most of your games. There's gonna be a couple games like God of War that are going to give you a warning screen saying that you need to have this set to buffered, but honestly, I think it's totally fine. You just don't get the best uh, on-screen graphics. Next, what we need to do is we need to go over to our control section and we need to go to the control mapping button. And the reason for that is because currently we have our D-pad and our analog sticks mapped to be the same thing. We definitely don't want that. We're going to remove those as the options for all of our D-pads. And again, I'm using a PS4 controller. You may be using something different, but you don't want your analog stick and your D-pad map to be the same buttons because some games actually make use of both the analog stick and the D-pad. So again, we're gonna go ahead and clear that out. Uh, the pad one X-axis is what we need to get rid of. Next, what we need to do is scroll on down and we need to locate our analog. So we've got our analog up. We're gonna change that uh, for all of them. Analog up, down, left, and right. And then we can scroll down and there's a couple other things that you can do. There is a speed toggle. I didn't find that it was very useful. Now for the pause button, this is going to be what takes us back into our emulator settings. So we're gonna go ahead and map that to our L2 button uh, and it may already be mapped there, but I just wanna make sure that my L2 button takes me back into the emulator settings. And there are a couple other options down here that are not set up. You can change them if you'd like. For example, if you want to uh, create a save state button or a load state button, you can do that right on here. And then you've also got your right analog stick. So we do wanna map those. Again, I am using a PS4 controller, so I do have a second analog stick. But once you're all done, you can go ahead and hit the circle button to back on out. And there's not really a whole lot else we can do. If you do need to mess around with frame skipping, you can do that right in the graphics section. I don't recommend it. Most things are running properly the way they are. Now keep in mind, not every game is gonna run perfectly, but we do have some really good performance. So with all of this out of the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into a couple games and show you guys how that looks.
All right, so as we can see, PSP runs fairly well. There are a bunch of games that do not run that well, so keep that in mind. This is not a perfect experience, but it is substantially better than it was a few months ago. And now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Nintendo DS games. And this is actually one that I am really excited about because I could not find many, if at all, any games that I tested anyways that weren't running really, really well. So first thing that we're gonna do is locate our drastic icon and we're going to press X to enter it. And the first thing that I wanna mention is that when you get this thing up and running for the very first time, it's gonna take you to this directory here. So what you need to do is press on the two periods in order to go back a directory and we're just gonna keep on going back until we get to our main directory for our USB. And you'll know it is because you'll see all of the folders that we're familiar with. We've got our payloads, games, logs, old bleem sync, project iris, etc. We need to go to our ROMs folder and then we need to locate our NDS folder, which is our Nintendo DS folder where we loaded all of our games earlier. If you have your games located in a different folder, at this point you would need to locate that folder. Now that we've entered the folder, it'll automatically load up all of our games. And as you'll see, we've got all the games that I previously loaded up as well as little avatars on the right hand side. The very first thing that we need to do, of course, is grab one of the games so we can access some of our settings. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump into Pokemon Heart Gold. And right away the game is going to start up, but what we need to do is move the right analog stick in order to get our options set up. And additionally, if you don't have a right analog stick, you can press the L2 button and it should bring up this uh, section here. Now there are a few options if you go into change options. There are a few things in here that you can change. For example, if you want the screen orientation to not be vertical and you want it to be horizontal, you can change it this way. Now, I personally like the vertical style. And the reason for that is because a lot of games will have video that kind of links from the bottom screen up to the top screen. So I like to actually be able to visually see that. That being said, if you do switch it to horizontal, you will see that the screens will take up much more real estate on the screen. So you'll actually get a bigger play area. Once you've decided what you want to do here, if you want it vertical or horizontal, you're gonna to have to scroll on down to where it says exit and save for all games. If you only choose exit and save for this game, those settings will be set for that specific title and any other games you go back to will be set on the default settings. So we're gonna go ahead and save this for all games. The next thing that we need to do is reconfigure our controls. Now they're not terrible, but I do find that if you are using a dual analog controller, there is a better way to get this set up. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into configure controls. And as you can see, you are mapped up with both keyboard buttons and joystick buttons. And what I wanna do is I want to make sure that you go down to the start section and you select start and you map it to your start button. And the reason why you wanna do that is because it is currently mapped to something different. Same with the select button. A lot of games do require both your start and select button. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that they are mapped properly. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is the touch cursor up, down, left, right, and press buttons. Out of the box, it is pre-configured to use the left analog stick. And I find that a lot of games require you to use the cursor and the D-pad at the same time. So I would recommend that you map those over to your right analog stick. And it's very simple. You just press the X button on it and you press the up button on the analog stick. And you'll do the same thing with down, left, right. And then for pressing it, you just click your analog stick in. Now, if we go down to extra controls, there are going to be a few other buttons here that we want to map. In terms of entering our menu, we want to change that. It's currently set to the right analog stick when you push it to the right hand side. We can't do that if we're gonna use the right analog stick as our cursor, so we need to change that up. I've actually gone ahead and remapped both buttons, both the keyboard button and the joystick button as my left analog stick to the left and my left analog stick to the right. Next, I've also created hotkeys for save states. So if you want to create a save state, all you have to do is press the L2 button. So that's how I've mapped it. And to load a save state is the exact same thing. You are going to press the R2 button. 
And the last thing that I changed here is the toggle fast forward. If you guys play Pokemon games or there are any RPG games and you want to be able to get through the game a little bit quicker, this is going to be crucial. Now I've set my fast forward button to be toggled on by pressing the left analog stick button and it works actually quite well. Other than that, there's not a whole lot that I would really mess around with. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Again, we're going to exit and save for all of our games. Then we can go back and return to our game. Now this is going to be set universally for all of the games. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of gameplay as well. And there you have it folks, that is Nintendo DS and PlayStation Portable running on your PlayStation Classic through Project Iris. Please consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you did not like it, and let me know in the comments section below what you guys thought of these ports. But that's pretty much all I've got for you, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.